What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here today after having a break for a day or so after posting my last crazy video uh, one which I made where most people thought I made under the influence of some kind of drugs them comments did not make me laugh uh, you cheered up my day to be honest I'm not gonna lie to you guys but if you missed it here's a clip of that Now if you do want to watch the full video, you'll find that link to within the video description. It's a bit of a crazy one, I'm not going to lie to you guys. So today I'm back with a little bit of news on Destiny 2. So over the past five months, Destiny 2 has basically seen to be getting worse and worse by the week. I mean, the future sounds great, on paper that is. But at the moment, it's in serious poor health and needs a lift for sure. Deej, the Destiny community manager, hasn't really spoke out much over the past few weeks. Uh, with the recent announcement also by Bungie that they are looking for a new Destiny community manager, many, many people thought that we might see Deej himself step down. Now, before we go any further, people, I do want to say a few things. I know I ain't sticking in the corner of Deej here, but of recent, I have seen a lot of hate thrown his way. This is because he's basically the face of the Destiny team, but as far as I know, he takes no part in the design of the game. He has no say in the choices made in game development. His job is to pull it out to us as best he can, and yes, he hypes up the game, he gets us interested in the product, he's entertaining and a great character. That's his job and he does it great, but the problems behind the scenes at Bungie and the game don't really have nothing to do with him, yet the backlash he receives is kind of crazy. Does he deserve it? I'd say not, but many disagree, that's fine, we all have our opinions. But the state of the game and the community's backlash, like what we are seeing with Destiny 2, is enough for anyone involved to pack up and leave shop. Earlier, Deej tweeted this, On Community Manager Appreciation Day, it must be said, more and more, I rely on Cosmo and DMG, along with the entire Destiny player support team at Bungie Help, to serve the Guardians and keep the bridge between the players and the developers open. Their passion for the game and their tireless advocacy for the players is what community management is all about. Now after reading this you do kind of get that feeling. Some dude then replied to Deej saying the following, From all these tweets you're starting to sound like you're transitioning away from Bungie. Are you on your way to a new job? Deej replied with, I've been at Bungie for 7 years with no signs of stepping down anytime soon. Day to day I'm working more to evolve our customer service and communications. That takes me one step away from the very front lines of the community, so I'm being succeeded by better, newer blood. So Deej stays, and to be honest, I think this is good news. If you hate that fact, so be it. Now in the good times of Destiny 1, everyone loved this dude. Because Destiny has started to go downhill, so as the support for these community managers, Cosmo and DMG included. At the end of the day, they can only say and do so much, the rest is on the team behind them. I actually don't think these dudes do a bad job. Now the rest of the Bungie team needs to fix the heck up and deliver on what we expect for the future of the game. Okay, so we're going to move on now. After stalking Christopher Barrett's tweets, we get a few bits of juicy info to talk about. So first up, we have a spec of info on a feature being added, which is so damn needed, and that is the mass deletion of shaders. Barrett was asked of this. Please, a functionality to dismantle all shaders in a single slot would save some time. Barrett replied with, We'll be posting an article explaining the technical challenge of why we haven't fixed it along with when you can expect a solution. A reply said, Making something you can't fix is called poor design choice and shouldn't be met with excuses but rather a rework from the ground up. I know it's harsh but the game's hemorrhaging players, it may be worth thinking about. Barrett replied saying, I was just offering transparency on this particular issue and why it isn't a trivial fix. I agree, it needs to be resolved. 
and resolved it does need indeed people this is one of the most irritating things in the game having 300 plus stack shaders is crazy when you have to delete them one by one it's an absolute joke that needs fixing it sure does moving on and Barrett was asked Quick question, are we going to be able to change the armor type in the future, like change it from resilience to cross root, etc? Uh, Barrett replied with, yes, this is a feature of masterwork armor. Now this is actually great, I didn't know this was actually going to be a thing, but I, it's actually pretty good to think about. It means I can wear my favorite armor in whatever scenario I want to wear that armor, because normally I will switch my armor setup depending on the activity I'm about to take part in. Being able to do such, in my opinion, is a great, great addition, both to customization and allowing us to look the way we want to look, wearing that specific arm we want to wear, while its stats are how we want them. Great news, in my opinion. Moving on, and a little info on the new emote system coming soon. Matt Salon asked, can you give us any info on the new emote system? Will it be just for, or maybe something like uh, Elder Scrolls Online with lots of emotes assigned to a radio wheel? Would love this, thanks for all you do. Barrett replied with this info. Players will have the ability to customize each of the four emotes on the D-pad slash keyboard. So basically people, this allows us to assign any emote to your D-pad, up, down, left, right, so you can use four emotes at a time. Any of your choice, I am guessing here. Another great bit of info to speculate over. Nightmare646 asked, is there going to be any more exotics returning from Destiny 1? Barrett replied with, yes, new exotics are a higher priority, but we'll be bringing back some old favourites too. This I like the idea of, there are still a few exotics I'd love to see make a return, namely the Sewage Regime, the Norland Beyond and the Icebreaker. But what exotics would you like to see return? Let me know down below. Moving on and to end on, about a week ago I covered news of secrets and collectibles within future DLCs, namely exotic gears and things like ghost shells and so forth. Well, Adam asked Barrett this, will there ever be hidden quests like the Black Spindle and the Outbreak Prime again? These types of quests are non-existent in D2 and they were brilliant. And I agree they were. Barrett replied with yes. Now we know of secrets and collectibles to find in future DLCs, but this does confirm the inclusion of secret exotic quests, much like the Outbreak Prime, the Slipper Simulant and the Black Spindle. These are things many of us love to hunt for. With the addition of such coming to the future of the game, it is a real good thing in my opinion. But in saying that people, I'm always left with this thought when making any news video on upcoming future things. Most of these great additions should have been in the base game. They knew what we wanted leaving Destiny 1. I don't think they can excuse that fact. And on that note guys, I am ending it right there. Thanks for stopping by as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did leave a like, it really does help me out. Again, thanks for stopping by and hopefully people, I will see you on that next one. Get it right.